AI is taking the world by storm. Whether you're generating rooms or you're using something to generate the next essay that you need to write. What if we could take a image such as a picture of me with my thumbs up and transform that in a way that makes sense for the user? So in this video, I'm going to use Cloudinary's powerful Cloudinary Upload widget alongside OpenAI and transform those images using Cloudinary transformations. Whether you need pixelation, blurriness, or you just need a blue hue, AI has you covered. I'm going to be using Shad CN's template to create our application here. Instead of using Create Next App, we're going to be using this. Now, the reason we're using it is because it comes with some pre-built UI and it sets up Tailwind in a really nice way to allow us to have composable UI elements as we need them. So to do that, it's just create next app dash E and then here is the URL, which I'll make sure is in the description. Then we give it a name. So we'll call this AI image and then we'll wait until everything is installed and it just takes a few seconds here to install our application and also set up all of the Tailwind and give us some composable UI. And then once that's done, we'll take a look at it. Now that application is set up, we have a good base to get this started. And if we go ahead and go to our website, this is what it looks like right now. We have a home section and then we have a way to do light and dark mode. And of course we have all our documentation. So now we're ready to start building. The first thing we really need to do here is get Cloudinary set up, which is the most important part of our whole application. So let's talk about how we're gonna set up Cloudinary and what packages we're going to be using. So to give you a quick tour of how the application is set up, we have an app section with our layout, which is our root layout. We have a page, which is just the home page. We have some components here in our UI section. And then we have our configuration, which has our site, which gives you all the links and things like that in the home page. And we have our fonts and the utils if we're using any of them. The first thing we actually need to do is configure our Next.js. Right now we're using this app directory but we actually need to also make sure that one, we have the latest version of Next, and two, that we want to use server actions. So we can actually delete this part out. Hit save, and then go back to our terminal here and do npm update next. And that will give us the latest version of Next, which should be 13.4.4. And then the secondly, we need to make sure our esconfig.next is also updated, so we can just do a npm update for this. Then we need to go to our next config here and we need to add an experimental feature for server actions because we're going to be showing off server actions today as well. So you want to use experimental here and inside that object, there should be one for server actions. And we want to set that to true. And now we have the ability to use server actions for any of our forms. Even if they're on the client, we can still make server calls. So now that's all set up, let's talk about Cloudinary. So if you don't already have a Cloudinary account, they have a great free tier. I've been using Cloudinary for years. So once you've signed up for an account, go ahead and log into that account. And once you're logged in, we can talk about what we need from here. So when you log in by default, you're going to see this Cloudinary name and we're going to be needing this to do our work. On top of that, your media library is right here, which is full of all the different images. And you can see I've been testing here. So I've got all sorts of funky images, all sorts of things here that we may need. Um, but this is where all your media is stored when you upload it to Cloudinary. So first, let's go ahead and set up Cloudinary by using their Cloudinary Next.js package. So Cloudinary have this next Cloudinary package, which gives you a bunch of wrapped features that we're going to be using today. So we're going to be using the Cloudinary image. We're also going to be using the Cloudinary upload button to upload images to Cloudinary ready for us to transform. So all you need for this is npm install next Cloudinary and then the Cloudinary cloud name, which again, you can find right in your dashboard. It's right here. Make sure that you use that. So let's go ahead and copy this and then go to our terminal here and do npm install next Cloudinary. And then let's create a .env. And we'll just copy this directly in there. And then we'll put our cloud name in so we can get that from here. Just click the copy button here and drop it right in. Now we have that set up, 
our application is already ready to be used with Cloudinary. So now we can actually start making components that we want to use for Cloudinary. So we need two types of components here for this whole application only requires two real components. One component will be our upload section, how we handle our uploads. And the second part will be how we handle both transformations as well as displaying the image to the user. Both those are really important pieces. People wanna be able to see what they're uploading. And of course, people want to be able to see what is happening. So from here, we're going to start using our component section here. By default, we actually get buttons, which we're going to be using in our project. And that's part of the Shad CN library, but we're going to be making another folder here and we're going to call it Cloudinary. And that's just ease of use. Obviously you can call it whatever you want, but this is what we're going to call it for this project. I'm gonna go ahead and close all of these out so that we're not having a thousand tabs open. And then from there, we're going to start our project. The first part we want to do is allow users to upload to Cloudinary. So let's start there. So first let's work on our Cloudinary upload button. So we're gonna call this file name Cloudinary Upload. So new file, we'll just call it Cloudinary Upload.tsx. So then we need to make this a use client because it requires user interaction. So we're going to be using use client here. And then we need to actually use the Cloudinary Upload button. So if you tab back into our documentation here, we're going to be using this Upload button. So we need to make sure we import this. And then we're going to be using this Cloudinary Upload button. So we can just do export const Cloudinary Upload equals, and then we'll do a return here. And we're just gonna return this as the default for now, but we're actually going to make this look just like any other button on our application. So if we head back to our application here and we look at it, we want it to look like this kind of button. Instead of looking like a just generic button, we wanna make sure it looks like this. So we can do that by importing button variants. So you can do that by doing import button variants. And that's gonna come from the UI section here. So we can do at, components slash UI slash button. And that will give us our button variants and make sure we include a slash in there so that we have this button variants. And we also need to learn how to spell, but button variants allows us to essentially make this into our own kind of button. And they give you the ability to add class names and things like that, which is what we're going to be using. So now we have this button variants, we can add a class name here and we can equal to and we're going to use the button variants. So you can just do button variant. Then inside of that, we can pass in the object and we just give it a size. And then we just tell it what size we want. So we want a large size here. So we make it a large button. And then we need to handle some more. So we're actually gonna pass in some props here. We can hit save so that it just formats it for us. We're gonna delete this upload preset for now. And we're going to use on upload which is a way to essentially tell it what to do on upload. So for on upload, we're going to pass in Cloudinary and a widget. And then we're going to handle both of those and tell it what to do when a upload is successful. So inside of there, we're going to have an arrow function here. And inside our arrow function, we're going to do just two things. We're going to do props.handleImage, Cloudinary.info, dot secure url and then the final thing we just want to use the widget here i wrote width up there for some reason this should be widget and we're going to do widget dot close like so and this is all we really need but there's one missing piece which was the part that i just talked about which is uh the upload preset which we haven't set here. So we need an upload preset. And I wanna talk about how this works so that you understand. So we're gonna head back to our Cloudinary dashboard here. And we need to talk about upload presets. So if you're at the dashboard here, you want to go to settings, which is down in the left-hand corner. And we're gonna let it load. And then there's this section here called upload. And you're gonna click this add upload preset here. If you don't have one, you need to add one here. And we, you just need to set it to the following settings. 
it will have a preset name and you want to have it unsigned for this example. We're going to have upload, access mode is public, and then backup is account default and everything else can be turned off. So now we have this upload preset, we can grab this name and we can just toss that right in to our application here. And then at this point, this is actually ready to be used. So before we show this off, let's talk about what's happening here. So what we're doing here is we're using the Cloudinary Upload button, which gives us a button to allow us to upload anything through our widget. You then have this on upload. And what we're doing is we're handling this info secure URL, which is the URL, which is passed back from Cloudinary. And then we're gonna tell it to go ahead and close this widget. So now we can actually use this to test our uploads. So what we're going to do is head over to our page here, which is a server component by default. We're going to import this in. We're going to use this to upload an image to Cloudinary so I can show that part off. And then we're going to work on the next piece. So the first thing we need to do is import this Cloudinary upload. And that's gonna come from at slash components slash Cloudinary slash Cloudinary upload. So for right now, what we'll do is inside of here, we're going to delete this props out. And we're just going to go ahead and remove this section right now. But instead, we'll just do console.log so that we can see how this works. But we're going to come back and add this feature after the fact. So for now, we'll just keep it like this. And we'll hit save. And then we'll import this into our index page here, which is under page.tsx. So import Cloudinary upload, and then we can just throw this in here. So Cloudinary upload. And now if we click this upload button here, we should have the option to take a picture. And as you can see, here's me in my room on a different camera. I can click capture here and I can click upload and it will upload that feature. And if we go into our console, we should see that we have this image right here. If I click it, you can see that that's me looking very confused as I'm talking, but you get the idea. Now what we need to work on is how to handle this image and actually show it to the user after they've uploaded it. Because right now what happens is, is it uploads and if we go to our dashboard and we click on our media center, we'll see that that media library has a new image right here. Here I am but it doesn't actually work. So what do we need to do now? So let's head over to a new component here inside of here. I'm gonna call it Cloudinary Images. And this is gonna handle most of the work. So we can go cloudinaryimages.tsx and inside of here is where we're going to both import this co client component so we can keep a client component altogether, but we're also going to use server actions inside of here as well. So what we can do now is start by using one of the features of Cloudinary, which is this Cloudinary image, which gives you the ability to essentially set widths and the source and the sizes, etc. And it will just make responsive sizing. We can do transformations, but we're going to be doing transformations completely different than using this. We're actually going to use the URL so that you don't have to remember all of this and you can just make a custom one whenever you need to. So what we're going to do is import this at the top. So we still need a use client here. And this what makes the new RSC pretty great is the ability to split cloud client from server and also mix in server and client when we need it. So now we have this, we need to now start making our new component. So let's start with export const cloudinary image and then we're going to need a use state for this. So let's import use state. So we can just import a uh, star from start as react from react and then we can do const and we'll have one called image and set image and we'll equal that to react dot use state and we'll set it to an empty string because that's what it will be by default and then we also need to just handle a return here. So for now, we'll just put a div and we'll have that. And now we're ready to start building out this project. So we're actually gonna import this Cloudinary upload. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can do import uh, 
Clownary upload from dot slash Clownary upload. So immediately what we can do is actually check to see if there's an image here. So if we can say no image and then we can just return the Clownary upload. So Clownary upload and then hit save. So now we have ability to upload this image, but we actually want to update this code to take in a property, which you saw in the beginning. We're actually going to take that in and set this to the image prop. So back to our image upload here, we're going to take in our props now that we actually need. And we're going to take these props. And what we're going to do is instead of this console.log, what we're going to do is pass in props dot handle image. And we're just going to pass in this URL and we're going to hit save here. We're going to go back to our Cloudinary images here and we're actually going to handle that by doing handle image. We're going to pass in set image. So what we're doing here is essentially passing in set image for a use state so that we can use it later. So we're handling that by passing in our use state and then we can say if there is an image. So if there's no image, handle this. Otherwise, there's going to be an image. So we'll do and... And then we'll pass in this Cloudinary image here. So CLD image, which is going to give it a width equal to 600 and a height equal to 600. And that's just as generic. You can put whatever you want in here. I just want to keep it as simple as possible. Then we need to add the source. So the source will be image. We're going to put preserve transformations on. So this means if you already transformed it in Cloudinary, it won't mess those up. And then finally, we need an alt. So we'll just say, um, for now, we'll just put hello, my image. And we'll hit save here. So now we have the ability to set this to whatever it might be. And uh, just a quick note here is preserve transformations. Make sure you spell that correctly. And now we have basically a good starting point here. We can actually test this out now. So instead of using the Cloudinary upload here, we can change this to Cloudinary images and we can put Cloudinary image in here and then we can drop that right in here. Now, if we hit save and head back to our application here and go to Next.js, so now the application has changed slightly, but it all looks exactly the same. So we're going to click this button here. We're going to let this load and we'll just say hi there. And we'll just take a little picture. Then we'll click upload. And now you can see the image has been uploaded over here. And we can actually see the image at 600 by 600. So now we have a way to upload and display an image to the user. So far, so good. But now we want to do the next level, which is how do we take this image? How do we then transform the image and give the user the image back so they can one, look at it and two, have a way to download it or copy it or whatever they want to do. So if we go back to our application here and take a look, first thing we want to do is actually change this button's name because right now the button is just upload. So let's start with changing this to something else. Let's try upload your image. And then if we tab back to our here and hit refresh, upload your image now, perfect. So now we need to go back to our images here and we need to start handling this. So we're using use state here. So we're gonna have another use state as well. We might as well call this new image, set new image. We'll use use state for that. And this is just a way for us to keep track of the new and old image. So when we do the transformation, the user has an option to go back, right? They might want to look at the old image and be like, oh, the blurriness hasn't changed or it hasn't got a nice blue hue, whatever it might be, we can handle that. So now we need to have another way afterwards for this Cloudinary image to then have an input. Now, we're going to take this input and we're actually going to use ShadCN's inputs to do this. So if we go ahead and head back to the web and we just go to ShadCN UI and we scroll down into our sections here, we should have one called input. 
And to just use it, all you need to do is copy this NPM, which is NPX shared CNUI add input, and it will put it in our application. So if I just go ahead and open a terminal here and paste this in, it'll ask us a question and you're just gonna hit enter on it. And now we have this input in here that just has some defaults, which is perfect because that's all we want. So we can go ahead and close these out and then we can start working on the input part. So the first thing I think we should put in here is an input that's disabled, but has the image URL in it, just so that we know that we have one. So we can do that by just doing input disabled is true. And then we'll put in the value equal to image. And then obviously we're going to need some fragments here to hold on to this set of details. And then we need to import our input here. So we can just do import input from slash at slash slash at components slash UI slash input. And that will give us our input here. Now we can test the input, make sure this part works so that we know that this is working as expected. So let's upload another image here and make sure that this works. Hello, it's me again. Let's lean back and we can wave and upload. And as you can see right now, we have this input right here which is completely disabled, but it, you can still copy this and we can still use it. So we know that this works now. So now we need another input here, but this input is going to take an input from the user. So we're going to put another input in here. We're going to set this to type equals text. We're going to make the value to transform and then we'll give another use state here and we'll just call that transform. So we'll call this transform. and set transform and we'll put in on change handler here that just takes in the event and passes that along to set transform and we'll do e dot target dot value we'll hit save here and we'll close out our input so now we have a way to transform. So now we have an input for transformation. So let's just test that out while we're here. Let's start upload another image. We just put another camera image. We'll just do a little thumbs up here this time. And then we'll capture it. And now we should be able to type into this so we can just type whatever we want. So now we have a form that we can use to type in for our transformations. So the next part is the part you've all been waiting for using OpenAI. So let's talk about how to use OpenAI in a Next.js application. So we're actually going to be using server actions, which I'd like to point out at the time of this recording are very much in alpha. So there may be some changes if you're watching this video that have happened, or it may be unstable by the time that you've played around with this but we should talk about how this works. So the way the server actions work, they allow you as a developer to mix in server and client kind of together. So instead of having to then make an API call and make that API call, then call your server and then make that server return the data to your client side, what you can actually do is make this call right from the client using server actions. It does all the stuff on server, client and secrets all kept secret, but it allows you to then to return the data, allowing you to mix the client and server together, kind of. So we're going to use one single example here of server actions. I thought it was really important to show this off as it is a new feature and people are interested in it. And I thought this was a perfect way to mix them together. So to set it up, we're just going to set a new file here. I'm going to call it underscore actions.ts for TypeScript. And then inside of here, you need to put use server at the top. That tells Next.js, hey, this is actually a server action and don't let this run ever on the client. Then we give it a name, so we can just call this export async function transform image action. And we're going to be passing in two things here, the transform 
request and the original image. Those two things are essential because the original image has the URL that we need OpenAI to use. And two, we need a transform request, right? Whatever that might be, turn my image pixelated. That is a transform request. We need to handle that. To make TypeScript happy, both transform request is going to be a string as is the original image. So now we have those. We can make our transformation request here. So we're just going to set this to transform equals and we need to give it a good prompt for OpenAI to really work. So the prompt we're going to use here is using Cloudinary transformations best to this and then we'll just put in original image. And that should be good enough for us to actually get some good, decent results. And we'll obviously have to tweak maybe the request to make the request seem a bit better. So the next thing we need to do is actually sign up for OpenAI. If you don't have an account, you can sign up and you get free credits. I already have an account, but I just want to talk about what we need from OpenAI. So if we head back to our application here and we type in openai.com, click the login button here and sign in through the API option here. As you can see, I already have an account and you can click this view API keys right here. And you'll see that I have a few API keys, create a new API key and grab that and drop it into your .env. This is very important. So once you've done that, now we need to work on configuring OpenAI. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new folder at the root of the directory in the source. If you're using source in this example, we are not. We're going to call this utils. And inside this utils folder, we're going to have a new file. I'm going to call it open AI client.ts. Then we're going to import two things. We're going to import configuration and open AI API. And those are both going to come from open AI. And we just need to install this package here. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. So it's going to be npm install open AI. Once that's installed, go back to your client here. And now these should be available as you can see. Then we just need to create our configuration. So const config ration equals new configuration. And inside this new configuration, we're just going to put our API key in. And we can do that by doing process.emv and then the open API key, whatever key you called it. For mine, I called it open AI API key. So call it that. And then we just need to export const open AI equal to new open AI API and then the configuration. Now this might seem over the top, but it just makes it really easy to reuse. So if you want to extend this project out, you can just use this over and over again. So now we need to use this in our server action. So we can actually import this at the top. So we can just say import open AI from at slash utils slash open AI client. And now we have the ability to use OpenAI in our server action. So what do we do with OpenAI? Well, it's a small configuration to make it work. So we're gonna call this OpenAI request, await OpenAI. So we're going to be using this OpenAI here. And then we're gonna ask it to create completion. And then we're going to pass in everything that we need. So there's a bunch of different stuff in here and it's all very confusing. And what does model and best of and frequency penalties mean? All those kinds of things. So we're going to keep this as simple as possible. We're going to use some defaults and then some that we're going to change. So we're going to set the model. And obviously this all depends on what we're doing. But for us, we're going to be using the text DaVinci 003. So it's just text dash DaVinci dash 003. We're going to have a prompt here and the prompt is going to be our transform prompt that we just asked for. We're going to set the temperature to 0 0.2. Now temperature basically tells it if the number is really high, like a one, for example, do something crazy. And if you set it to 0 0.2, that means just like, hey, I want something that just makes sense. Then we're going to set max tokens. We're going to set them to 200. That's just like a default number. 
but that just means how many tokens you're using to transform something. So for here, the maximum amount is 200. You're going to set the top P to one. You're going to set the frequency penalty to zero. And we're going to set the presence penalty here to zero as well. So all those things here should give us a good response. By default, OpenAI will only return a single response and that's actually great for us. So we can do here is const response equal to OpenAI request. So the re original request data dot choices zero dot text. And we'll just add a optional chain here just to be sure. And then we can say if the response does not equal undefined, return response. And that's it. That should give us a response from the open AI and give us something to work with. Now, of course, this is pretty poor error handling, but for this demo, it will work fine. Of course, you want to make sure you're handling things like rate limiting. And also if there's a 500 error or if open AI is down, like a bunch of things like that, make sure you're handling all of those. But now we can actually use this serve function wherever we want. So next on the list is actually handling this. So inside of our components here, inside of our Cloudinary images, we're going to import this server action. So we can just do import transform. We'll just keep it that for now while we do the import. So it's at slash app slash underscore actions dot. And then we should have the ability to auto complete this. There we go. So transform image action. And we're going to use this actions here. So now we need to use this in our client here, which kind of sounds freaky if you've been in the space for a while. So all we're going to do is do async function, transform image, and then inside of here, const new image equals await. So we need to await this transform image action here. So we can do await transform image action, so then we need the transform request, which should equal transform. And then we need original image, which we can set to image. And then that will happen on the server and everything will happen there, just like an API request. And then we need to set new image to new image. And then we need to just handle that. So we can just copy this here and we can drop this down into here and we can say if new image and then we'll clear this out and we're going to use image from next image to display this image. So we can do import image from next image and then we can set the width equal to 600 the height equal to 600 so that it matches the above the source file obviously will be new image and then we'll give it an alt of my transformed image and then we can say if there is an image and no new image then that will disappear and this will push in and we can hit save here. So let's go ahead and test this out and see what the server action actually does. But before we can do that, we need a button here. So we can just do button. So we can input the button at the top. So we can just do import our button here from at slash components slash UI slash button. And then we can just drop a button in here and all we're doing is saying handle the transform. So we'll just transform image and it has a button that says transform. Okay, so we're back in here. Let's try this out. One, let's click the upload image. Let's click camera. Let's give ourselves a little thumbs up. Wish us a bit of luck and we'll say pixelate this image. Hit transform and there we go. So we've asked it to pixelate and my image is very pixelated right now. So our transformation is working as expected, right? So now we have this, we can play around with it a bit, fix the UI and obviously give someone the option to revert. So let's fix the UI first and make it less like this. So if we go to here and go to our new image, we want a button. So we can just say button. 
and we'll add a class name here equal to mt-4 as well. And then we'll say on click, we'll just uh, set new image to blank. And if we go back here, we actually need to give the button a name, I suppose. So let's just do a button here and we'll just say revert. So now that we've fixed the UI to make it make more sense, all we've done here is just add some input here, making sure we've put some margins around the tops. And then in our actual page layout here, we've just added this max width and then we've added this flex here to justify the center. So now it looks like this. So when we do our transformation now, so if we do uh, pixelate, pixel, pixelate, and hit transform, we should get the result in the middle of the screen. And we also should get a new image here and we can revert back and now we have everything. So that's everything now. We have this ability to use AI with Cloudinary to transform our images. So there you have it, transforming all of your data using Cloudinary. If you did enjoy this video and you really, really like these long form tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.